So the stage is set for the sixth race of the championship and the second half, if you like, of the ITM 400 here in Hamilton. We will have 28 starters today. Great to know that Paul Dumbrell's car 55 has been patched up after a massive shunt in qualifying. He missed yesterday, but he's back today. That's going to be the big key. The critical question will come from above. They're telling us occasional showers, and that uh, has been true to their word throughout the day. It can rain one minute and stop the next. 3.4 kilometres, genuine street circuit. With an average speed of just under 150 kilometres an hour, in fact, based on the sorts of speeds we've seen on the drier laps around here, it's about 147 k's, which makes it the 11th fastest average in our international tour of 14 venues around the countryside and around about 42% of the lap at 100% throttle. Eight turns and so far this weekend it has turned on a great show for us, really through practice, through qualifying, the shootout, race number five and here's the way in which they'll line up for race number six after a ripper qualifying earlier today. The Kelly brothers at the front, only the second time they've qualified one and two. It's been a great weekend for the Kelly family. Steve Owen, his best ever qualifier individually, will line up alongside Shane Van Gisbergen. The other Kiwi inside the top five is Greg Murphy. Isn't that something to watch for the locals? Lee Holtsworth will be alongside him. Alex Davison started last yesterday, finished inside the top ten. We know Craig Lowndes was on the podium yesterday. It was a hell of a day for Jamie Wincup. He really uh, struggled throughout, and Will Davison will line up alongside him inside the top 10. There's Paul Dumbrell, he's qualified 11th. Tony D'Alberto celebrating his 100th V8 supercar race today. James Courtney and Stevie Johnson, former teammates, alongside each other. Tim Slade had a big off at turn one yesterday and was lucky to get out of it. Michael Caruso caught a 25 point penalty for some infringements. Russell Ingle, 47 years old, against Dean Fiore, 27 years old. And behind them, two guys with enormous experience. Between them, 742 V8 supercar races for Garth Tander and Jason Parguana. Mark Winterbottom, second in the championship. Warren Luff didn't make it to the finish yesterday. Carl Reinler from WA, that's where we're heading next. The Trading Post Challenge at Barbagello. He's qualified 23rd alongside Jason Bright. There's our other Kiwi in the field, Fabian Coulthard. Expect a bit more of him today. I don't think that's relative, really, to what he can achieve, that starting position. And then the rear of the grid made up of Jonathan Webb and James Moffat. So that's your Fuso start grid for this race. 28 cars, 59 laps, 200 Ks, and who knows what else it's going to throw at us. Because it is a street circuit, you watch it. Differences in surface right there at turn two, from asphalt to concrete, curves up to turn three forms part of a roundabout on the normal streets it's where Paul Dumbrell went in heavily this is turn four they have to go through here cleanly there are sensors in the road to make sure they don't curb hop throughout there they get a few chances and then they'll start to get penalized we'll talk you through that as it happens a big pond sport of course we'll keep you updated just take your Telstra Next G Mobile with you if you need to head out and you'll get our coverage along the way. So it's a great circuit, this one. There's something in it for everybody. The crowds have been spectacular. I mean, given the weather, it's been windy, it's been quite cool, it's been pouring, um, but they love it. The Kiwis have always loved the V8 Supercar Championship coming here, and we love coming here as well. On board with Russell Ingle, super cheap auto racer, starting his gazillionth race today. <laughs> I've lost count. I've lost count of his birthdays as well. I made up 47. It could be, could be further up. Will Davison's had a pretty solid weekend. It's been that kind of year for him, uh, switching to Ford Performance Racing. He's had a fight for almost everything that he's that he's got, both in qualifying and race. A bit of a physical fight on this weekend as well as we go on board with James Courtney and the wonderful point of view camera from the footwell in his car. There's Paul Dumbrell. Good to see him back out today in the Botlow car after a lot of work from the boys in that garage to get it back after the incident on Friday and earlier on Saturday. So he had two incidents that took him ultimately out of play. Yeah, Will's got a little bit of a drama at the moment with um, just the seat positioning, just the ergonomics in the car and the activation of the brake pedal. Uh, you get this, Scofie used to have this situation as well where your coming, right leg... Coming, 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 stop. Or your right buttock, uh, your right foot 
eventually gets numb on the brake pedal and it's particularly prevalent at street circuits where you use a lot of pedal intensity. There are some very big stops around here and this place is pretty high brake stress in dry conditions. He got away with it yesterday in the wet. You'll have to match, uh, manage it a bit carefully today. Absolutely. This is uh, Steve Owen. We're just on board there with Lee Holdsworth. This start is very important. Street circuit, hard to pass. It'll be James Moffat. James Moffat into pit lane. And Rick Kelly and Todd Kelly on the front row of the grid. And you don't need to have an inter-team drama at turn one. Well, they admitted to us that they would be nervous because they're going to start effectively side by side down to turn one. Yesterday, this is where Rick Kelly really made a statement and today he's going to lead them down to the first turn again. His brother's holding off Steve Owen who gets hung out wide at one. Greg Murphy makes a charge straight away. Nice job from Rick to jump across. Grab his spot. There's Van Gisbergen up the inside. He's going to get Owen here at turn two. Steve's very wide on the concrete. That's awkward. Greg Murphy moves up as well. So Rick's bolted, then Todd, then Van Gisbergen. A lot of aggravation back in the pack. That's the exit of three. Now Dumbrell. up to four. Dumbrell's got a problem. He's off the side of the circuit at three. Todd Kelly went diving over those curbs. So it's the Kellys versus the Kiwis. Oh, oh Jamie Wincup gets wide. A few years ago, he got too wide there and found the wall. Here's Tony Dalberto. Good move on the inside. Up to six. It's not an easy one. The circuit's bumpy there. Alex Davison's caught in that as well. And it was three abreast. A very healthy manoeuvre. And one of them, that was Will Davison, almost in the fence at turn seven. And a little bump there from Alex Davison into the back of Jamie Winkup. So a pretty lively first lap. Very good job for the Kelly boys and the two Kiwis, Van Gisbergen and Murphy, trail them. Michael Caruso slots in ahead of James Courtney and did it well at one. Carrying an enormous amount of speed down there at the end of the main straight. It's not over. Very deep under brakes for Caruso. Good move, well done. And that puts James side by side with Alex. Look at this, Holdsworth and Lowndes, turn three. So the two GRM cars are going nuts in the opening laps. They've got confidence in their cars as Holdsworth pulls up alongside Lowndes. There's Will Davison, then Delberto, then Winkup. There's Caruso and Courtney. Takes you down to position 12. Have a look at the start. Great jump, Todd Kelly. Have a look at the reaction time. Todd's initial jump was better, but Rick's secondary start, the amount of wheel spin, was less. So he got a really good run into the first corner. Steve Owen wide, three abreast for the field. Everybody got through there very well, actually. I thought there was going to be more drama based on being three abreast here. Have a look. This is on board with Winkup. So he That's got swamped a bit. Jamie Winkup got swamped by Will Davison, who ends up a little bit wide. So there was contact there between Lowndes and Alex Davison, and maybe as a result of all that hard work that they've put into car 55, something's gone amiss. Murphy shows good speed here. He hasn't lost any ground on Van Gisbergen. And right behind is Steve Owen. We pulled Umbrell back in the garage. He's bent the steering. They're not sure how that happened, but he's back in for a little while while they fix the bent steering. Gee, it's been a tough weekend for Paul Dumbrell. Those belts grabbed him when he went into the wall here at Turn 3 yesterday as well. So physically tough too. Nice margin here for Rick. 1.2 seconds. He's the fastest man on the racetrack. Todd, his brother, doing a nice covering job. But on this lap, as brake temps and pressures, uh, tyre pressures come up, everything starts to normalise in the car. Oh, that's bad when you see oh, those tyre oh, bubbles moving that like that. Big move. He's crashed his car too. Courtney's crunched it. Yep. He snapped something on the right-hand side as soon right. as he went okay, over. Mate. It's broken a steering arm. Let the field pass, please. Broken a steering arm. The tyre bundle got moved, I think, was the trap there. And lucky not to have ended up in the fence. Yeah, he just nailed them in front of me. Yeah, that's what he's saying, Coppo. That, that tyre bundle was nailed in front of him. He had nowhere to go. and oh, The damage is quite severe. Slow it up a little bit. 
so he doesn't end up in the wall. Here, Here it is go. again. And uh, yeah, he's nailed the tyre. It was one of the GRM cars. Michael Caruso. And Caruso, yeah, Caruso yeah. who yeah. dislodged him in the first instance. That's the hit too. Well, it's a big one, wasn't it? <laughs> He was lucky he didn't grab the wall. But James was back far enough. There's a big gap there. So although he hit the tyres, James was back far enough to see it. So, I mean, it wasn't... I know Caruso did hit them, but he was certainly back far enough they, they, for visibility. They weren't dislodged, well, no. as in they weren't out on the racetrack. Exactly. Though. So, anyway, big damage there to the front of the champion's HRT car. Now, Steve Owen is... Slotted in front of Greg Murphy. So the top three have pulled away just a touch. And look at the train behind Murphy. So maybe Murphy's got some issues at the moment. Not as many as James Courtney has, but Murphy may well be a bit of a cork in the bottle. But Rick Kelly's got off to a flying start, a second lead over his brother, Todd Kelly. the two team Vodafone cars. So the Pepsi Max crew has already been rounded by Lee Holdsworth and Steve Owen. So Rick Kelly's a race leader by half a second from his brother Todd. Then it's Shane Van Gisbergen third, then Owen fourth, Holdsworth, then we find Murphy, there's Davison, Lowndes, then Wing Cup, Michael Caruso. And that is your top ten. Down here with James Courtney. A bit unlucky, James. I said it's plucked the shock absorber and the lower control arm out of the car, so it won't be repaired. But looked like Caruso clipped that tyre and had a little bit of a rebound out into your way. Yeah, as he hit it, sort of swung around and then come out in front of me and, and uh, yeah, took the wheel off it. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely not what we need. And, um, well, I guess that's the way it goes sometimes. So, uh, yeah, very disappointing. Bad luck, mate. Cheers. So Rick Kelly's lost some speed, guys. He's only 0.3 in front of his brother, Todd. 
uh, and Van Gisbergen is 1.5 seconds behind Rick Kelly. So both of those guys have actually taken some ground. As you can see, just there uh, into turn one, you just saw Todd from Rick, and there was only really half a car length or a car length there. There it is. It's yep. tightened up a little bit here. It's only early days in the championship, but another day like that is really going to hurt James Courtney. If you compare him to the man who's leading the championship, Jamie Wincup, Wincup he's already 250-odd points adrift. Yep. The way it's going, that will be a lot more by the end of this race. The, the other thing that you'd want to be doing at the moment, though, given that there's been so much focus in the races to date regarding uh, saving fuel, it's probably not a bad idea to try and use uh, the opportunity at the moment while you've got track position at the front of the field just to be a little bit conservative. So you might be able to turn it down just on the basis that you've got your elbows up high and you're out the front of the field. Oh, and the good thing about that is you know that your brother won't have a that's what I'm getting won't at. have a lunge at you. So there is a little bit of more, silly thing to say, a little bit of moisture around again at the moment. That's been the pattern all weekend, but it's just a bit of a shower passing through once again. A couple of spots around the racetrack. Craig will be upset with himself. He made a little mistake, and Will Davison got by, and now Will's holding him up. And Neil, I'd just like to add you a little strategy chat down there. I didn't get mine really finished well before the goon and the tech center forgot to turn his mic on. That'd be me. Um, but with that moisture around, and we didn't see this happen yesterday, the smart play is actually to stay out there and maybe run the tank of fuel that's in the car right out in the hope that you pick up a bit of wet weather and grab those wet tyres at the same time. Yes, so you're not making unnecessary stops. It was interesting yesterday, the number of people that stopped pretty much sort of on a paper sequence rather than perhaps just seeing what the weather was doing. And uh, those that hung on later and went on to the wets just once were definitely advantaged, you know, when they got closer to the end of that first fuel load, they were in a better position. traffic and uh, it wasn't going to be possible to just vault over people so plucking him out doing something like what Mark Larkin was talking about at the beginning of the program may pay a dividend for him there's still the threat though of this rain which makes me nervous about making that move right at the moment here's Craig Lowndes getting a spot on Will Davison the trading post entry took a couple of laps but Lowndes got the job done and now Will's in between a team Vodafone sandwich. Won't Jamie Winkup tucked in behind him. Todd Kelly. Lights flashing as he comes in. So Rick Kelly leads the race. Nice and straight, nice and straight. Plenty of room. Rare tyres, guys. Nine seconds to the field. Holding, 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 holding. Rears are done. Waiting on fuel. Fat lane's clear. Light throttle, mate. Nice, easy. Go, 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 go. Straight to fast lane. Good job, boys. And what a difference a day makes. Yesterday coming into pit lane, it was absolute mayhem. Garth Tander knocked over one of his crew. Michael Caruso did the same. Shane Van Gisbergen took out our cameraman, Davey Lovell, who's got a bad gash on his elbow, but he's OK, Murphy. thankfully. And Safety Greg car. Murphy is in big trouble. This is heartbreaking for the locals. That's at turn six. He's in the runoff area. He's just about next door. Yeah, exactly. So, safety car out. And this will work for Todd Kelly. It will work for Garth Tander to, to have done that stop. Yep. And it will be frantic work down in pit lane. Look at the amount of uh, leaf litter that's being picked up. The radiator intake and the brakes on many of the cars. That all happens around turn two, three, where the big trees are near the roundabout. Now, Paul Dumbrell is three laps down, so he's just clearing 
everybody here is now Rick Kelly and Shane Van Gisbergen join what's going to be a very right, busy pit lane. Below, mate. I got your pit lane. You're going to come through the KR garage, through the KR garage, stopping on the board. Don't go long. Rear tyres and fuel. Rear tyres and fuel. Good job, mate. Holding, holding, holding. Obviously, it's getting pretty busy. Holding, 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 holding. Go, 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 go. Get in there. Good boy. That worked well. That was very good. Good timing with being held up in pit lane there. He dropped in nicely. He did. And Van Gisbergen made a huge amount of ground on Rick Kelly coming into the pit. Did you see how much it was yeah, three or four car lengths? When you're the car behind, yeah. the radar doesn't grab you. There's a little bit of gamesmanship in that. Oh, and now Van Gisbergen's been caught, and he's lost a spot to Will Davison. Wind Cup had to queue. They had to stack him. Vodafone would have been hurt in all that. It's going to be close. Oh, well done. Green, 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 green. Remember, it's safety car, so once you're out, you're good. Safety car, once you're out, you're good. Wind Cup's been murdered. Oh, man, he's back with Winterbottom, who was down was around 20th. 20th. Well, they had to stack him. Yeah, so I said before, yeah. but it's... Uh, He's, he's really taken a hit as a result of that. It, it was a triple whammy. He had to wait on the way in. He had to wait when he was there, and then he got released into a whole stack of traffic on the way out. And I think Van Gisbergen got hurt because he's a long way back from where Rick Kelly is. He's yep. now behind Will Davison. Exactly. So Will Davison actually come out of that whole exchange the best. with the winner. Now, what created all that with Greg Murphy, saw him stuck out on the track. His car is actually stuck in fifth gear. So a bit unfortunate. Gee, I'll tell you, the other big loser out of that, Jonathan Webb, uh, he shares a boom with Dean Fiore. So those single-car teams generally have an agreement. Whoever's in front on the track gets the boom first. Jonathan had to stay there for a hell of a long time, and he's pulled up the rear. Jamie got really badly penalised in that last stop. He's tucked in 14th spot. Rick Kelly leads the race from Todd Kelly. And Will Davison goes oh, defensive oh. on Shane Van Gisbergen. Gets a tap from Todd for his troubles. And he's made a slow exit, Will Davison. He'll be under attack when they get down to turn two because Van Gisbergen's having a look now. He might have got away with it. 
Here comes Giz. Yet he's got Todd at two. So uh, that was a bit messy. That had potential to be a real disaster down at turn one. That's hurt Todd big time. Delberto oh, maybe God, could go hard into the fence at three. He's had a ripper run too. He started way back in 25th and he was inside the top 10. So Fabian Coulthard gets spun around at the roundabout. Through this Norton 360 chicane at turn four they go. You're riding now with Will Davison. Who's just been pinged with that sensor. And that's Tander down the inside. Big <laughs> dive on Todd Kelly. Todd Kelly has lost three positions in one lap. The tyres must be hurting since it cooled out during the safety car. And our, our perfect Petters safety car scorecard remains. Every race we've done on the streets of Hamilton, we've had a safety car. So the tradition continues in that respect. Get the rhythm, mate. Get the rhythm. All the right way to go on this end. That was Bright. I reckon he got it. Yeah, Bright definitely got the fence then for sure. Now, the thing that was close to happening at turn one on the restart was that when Will Davison locked the wheel, he almost sideswiped Rick Kelly. He almost gave Rick a bump for the lead, and he's and the game's still on. Now, Will Davison, I was just saying, has got three strikes, so he needs to be very careful in terms of this policy at the chicane. And this is the move I said. Watch the wet little section. He locks the wheel, and he almost gets... Rick Kelly into turn one, so pretty lively restart. This is Dalberto and Fabian Coulthard turns him around. And we've also got some drama leaving the lane. Here we go. This is Will, Shane Van Gisbergen, Holdsworth, Steve Owen, and Lowndes has done the same as Jamie, as did, Jamie yesterday. did yesterday. He just gave the fence a hit on the exit of the pit. So, <laughs> it's on for young and old, and Will Davison, good speed at the restart behind Rick Kelly, followed by Shane Van Gisbergen, and Tander's speed, very good. And remember, we made the point when Garth Tander came in, just how timely it was to come into pit lane before all the mess happened, and it's done him so well, because he started down in 19th, 19th and now he's up into 4th. He came into pit lane with no dramas whatsoever. They could do their job, release him well, and then the safety car's triggered. So, advantage HRT in that one. And Lowndes is starting to attack Steve Owen here on the run down to turn two. And there's Holdsworth. This is a move on Todd, and he makes it stick. He's lost some ground, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. It's just all of a sudden on the restart. He just hasn't recovered, has he? He, doesn't, he hasn't found the rhythm that he had at the start of the race at all. So he's gone from second to sixth in the two laps since the restart. And this is on board now with Steve Owen. Behind is Craig Lowndes. We know the sort of pressure that Lowndes puts on. He's a world champion of showing the nose of the car and intimidating the guy in front. Isn't that a great shot through that chicane? It's fantastic, isn't it? They look like slot cars off those curbs. And this is Will Davison right behind the leader, Rick Kelly. Hey, Spud, I know you're disappointed, and you should be, mate, but um, draw something positive. I think this weekend you've actually generally been more competitive than you have all year. It's looking good, really. Yeah, I think, and also with uh, Rick and Todd running so f close to the front and up the front, winning races, putting it on pole, you know, there's, there's a lot of good stuff to take for the whole entire team. And, and um, you know, we've, we're on the, on the side of the garage going to try and start emulating what those guys are doing. And mate, we reported that you got stuck in fifth gear. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it had a real funny shift um, out of turn five into fifth gear, it's really strange. And then when I went to shift out, I wouldn't go down and it's just jammed in fifth. I think something's, something's broken inside it, so uh, end of the day. Anyway, great to see you positive, mate. So I reckon you're in for a good rest of the year. Cheers, Marco, thanks, bud. Obviously dis disappointing there for Greg Murphy and certainly Murphy's been much more competitive this weekend. It's good to see him at the front of the field because he's a great racer and a very competitive guy. So there'd be signs of life there for Greg for the rest of the season. Lee Holdsworth has done the fastest lap of the race at 124.0. He's currently in fifth between Tander and Todd. Rick Kelly, Will Davis, and Shane Van Gisberg at 1, 2, and 3. It's 1.3 seconds across the first three cars. There are little battle groups everywhere. This is Fiore. He is in 17th in this battle. 
that's a that's healthy 16. That's a healthy move, that one on Engel down into... Oh, Russell's coming back and arguing the toss when they get to six and gets him back again. Good, good racing, very good. Steve Johnson up alongside too, so this will be interesting around this kick. Oh, oh. got to bump. We got one there yesterday from Winterbottom and they're all tagged each other then. That was Alex Davison gave him a hit with Jason Bright, so damage to the front of both those cars. And Bright gets a run now on Alex. And this will be this will be on down here at turn one because it's a bumpy braking area. We've already seen some water on the inside. And Steve covers. Jonathan Webb down the inside of Dave Reynolds. It's Greg Wheeler on the radio talking to Stephen Johnson. And look at Alex now. He's bringing up all the leaves on the inside. If you've got track position here, you'll get him. But that's all happened as a result of everybody getting out of rhythm in the battle up at six and seven and then into the final corner at eight. Stephen Johnson's going to have his hands full here trying to hold off Jason Bright as well because Bright wants a piece of that. Jonathan Webb has already got past Reynolds. He'd like a piece of it as well. Now Alex Davison can set sights on his next target, which is Dean Fiore. And Lee Holdsworth, another fastest slap at 23.87. So he's in fourth position, fifth position, catching Garth Tander for fourth. So Rick Kelly, Will Davison, Shane Van Gisbergen, Garth Tander, Lee Holdsworth, Todd Kelly, Steve Owen, Craig Lowndes, Tony Dalberto, and Michael Caruso make up your top ten. Right. Wink up in 11th and a good move there bright down the inside of steve johnson into turn six very good pass hasn't been a happy postcode for steve johnson this weekend because yesterday he had contact there with mark winterbottom so it's been a bit of a lively spot for steven this weekend here Here's we are todd. looking at sixth and seventh todd and steve owen lounge next then tony delberto michael caruso is 10th bit of a group that one all waiting to pounce from todd back to tim slade Eight cars. And Holdsworth just got Garth Tander for fourth spot. So Holdsworth off the top five cars looks pacey. So there, here we go. Here's the leader, Rick Kelly. Will Davison right behind him and local hero Shane Van Gisbergen in third. And there's Lee Holdsworth. Behind is Garth Tander from Rick Kelly, Steve Owen, Craig Lowndes, Tony Dalberto, Michael Caruso, Jamie Winkup. Mark Winterbottom, Jason Barguana, Tim Slade, Carl Reindler, Russell Ingle, Dean Fiore, Alex Davison, Jason Bright, Steve Johnson, Jonathan Webb, Dave Reynolds, Fabian Coulthard, and right there at the last curb off there was young James Moffat, who did a really good job yesterday in the rain. The shock load that's going through those cars at the curb at Turn 4 is amazing. When I mean, you just see it, when you just sit and witness all of the cars going through. Great job, you did a good job. Holdsworth 40, probably the quickest at the minute. You're the same as the others. It's Adam Hardy on the radio to Rick Kelly. I don't know what So this is tightening up this little battle between Will and Rick. There's been contact for Mark Winterbottom. I think Jamie Winkup's tied up in this somewhere along the way as well. This replay will unfold at Michael Caruso. So there's Winkup and then oh. Winterbottom, then Barguana. Yeah, so nose to tail traffic jam down at turn three. Safety car is going to be deployed. And of course, uh, they'll need to clear this man's car, Mark Winterbottom quite sure I mean clearly we can see the contact but not quite sure exactly why and uh, a tough weekend for Jamie Whitcup's getting tougher it's got a flat left rear tire 
So we're sort of seeing the aftermath, but not quite sure exactly why in the first instance. Got to stay on the brake. When the cars move like that, then everyone runs into them. So everyone, obviously, massive damage there, a lot of damage to the front of this car. And the only way you can ever see when the bonnet comes up like that is get your head down to try to look between the top of the, of the dash and the bottom of the bonnet, which Bargs is OK Which isn't at. a problem. Probably for height. <laughs> um, but they're the two series leaders. What? There you go. There's the bonnet coming up on Jason Bargwana's car. But the two series leaders, Wing Cup and Winterbottom, involved in that incident. So big championship implications. A lot of damage to the left-hand rear. Up in the air, we're blocks are clear. We're good this side. Stands under, please. That's, that's one and two in the championship involved in that. Wind Cup and Winterbottom. And remember, they get involved in those ones because you're back too far. You get involved in the drama because you're in the middle of the field. These two guys normally and he are at the pointy end. He qualified very poorly this morning because he just ended up out there on slicks in the wet. Didn't get a lap done early. rescue mission today because as it stands right now with Rick Kelly leading the race with Mark Winterbottom out of the race 
Rick Kelly's only 18 points off the championship lead. This is the incident that triggered it. It's very hard to figure out exactly what's going on there, but this bit's easy to understand. Big nose to tail action. And uh, Slade a bit lucky to get around the outside and all the debris. So we're about to go racing again, so we'll hear more about all that later on. Rick Kelly's got command. Will Davison looked racy. Van Gisbergen looking to drive down the gutter to sneak into second place on the inside. He's going to force the point. Oh, the Kiwis will love this because the local boy moves up to second spot on the restart. Shane Van Gisbergen now has Rick Kelly in his sights. There's a bit of rain coming down at turn two just to mix things up. Will Davison's under pressure from Lee Holdsworth at two. Garp Tand is in it. Steve Owen's in it as well. Holdsworth and Davison were the fastest guys before that safety car interruption. Here's Tim Slade inside the top ten. What a good move there, Shane Van Gisbergen. And it was a bad restart of Rick Kelly. He held them up and they were right together, which made him vulnerable. And ultimately, Will Davison just couldn't hold Shane Van Gisbergen out on the under brakes and got the job done. So, very good manoeuvre. Car 888 has got a drive-through penalty for crossing the blend line at the exit. So this is very bad news for Lowndes in eighth. So pit lane drive-through penalty, Craig Lowndes. And the, and the drama with that, Neil, is that he's third in the championship at the moment with the two major series contenders that have already got problems with Wink Up and Winterbottom. So Lowndes needed a good result. Missing a golden opportunity. Is Absolutely. Risk management's been a bit of an issue for them. Look at this. Move down the inside for Van Gisberg, and he's done it. Nice job. Ross and Jimmy Stone wrapped with that one. New leader of the race. Great news for the Kiwis. Van Gisbergen in front on the run to two. Kelly comes back. Crisscross. And then goes for the double move again on the inside. He can't get it done. What a great race. Rick starting all over the back of car nine, but the Giz holds on. And they love it here in Hamilton. Look at the crowd at turn three. That's what they've been waiting for. Here's Craig Lowndes serving his pit lane penalty. And but Shane Van Gisbergen, nine podium finishes in V8 supercars, never a victory. Still a long way to go, but wouldn't it be something if he claimed his first here at home? And the trouble for Craig when you take a penalty after a safety car period like that, the field's condensed, so effectively makes you last. It was going to make the point that managing risk has been a problem for them this week. Their pit lane exits, I mean, they've been costly, haven't they? There's just been a drama. No doubt. It has championship impact the way that stuff works. Here we go. Look at this. This is a great bit of opportunism down the inside. It certainly is. It's a really good pass. And I'm a little critical of Rick because he probably should have covered then. High speed turn eight. Releases them onto the front straight where they stand and applaud. Remember, Greg Murphy was the king of Pukekohe, but no Kiwi driver has won since we started coming to Hamilton in 2008. And he'll be using everything that he can possibly do at the moment. Every millimetre of road, using the brakes as hard as he can possibly use them to get a little break on Rick Kelly. And Van Gisbergen is going for a nice lap there. He was almost a second faster than Rick Kelly. So he's pulled out eight tenths of a second in that one lap of leading. And as I said, he'll be using every scary of his own effort and whatever the car's got to get a little margin. Well, if you go back through the books here, Jamie Winkup showed the way in that four straight run of victories that he had. He'd get to the front and take advantage as soon as he got there. More often than not, he put down the fastest lap in the race back to back to back to just get that advantage and pull away from an angry pack. And that's what this youngster will be learning from right now. He would have seen it. He's been in races against guys like Wing Cup at the top of their game and Tanda. And now he wants to get as far away from Rick Kelly as he can. Matty, I was just having a chat to Jason Barguan to try and make some sense of how that event happened there prior. And uh, apparently Caruso and Wing Cup got together in uh, turn two, pretty well alongside each other, trying to run up into three side by side. That's where the contacts began. Yeah, there's, as you well know, generally a 
a solid history to these things and we often catch the full stop and the outcome not always the stuff that triggers it initially but uh, certainly had a profound impact on a whole bunch of cars triggered a safety car condensed the field triggered further mistakes in the case of Lowndes and he's on the radio disputing that he's crossed that blend line it's all happening with a 0.9 margin now Van Gisberg into Rick Kelly here's the mother entry John Webb he's 17th at the moment Tucked in uh, behind Fabian Coulthard and in front of Michael Caruso was in the wars a bit earlier. That's Webb's crew in the middle of the shot there in pit lane, race control on the bottom of our mega wall, and we push in on Will Davison. He's really been fighting hard since the very start of this race. So he's tucked in behind Rick Kelly. Behind Will is Lee Holdsworth. And he's starting to regain pace again we like the show before the safety car so what's happened when the tires have cooled out the brakes have cooled a little for will he's lost a bit of rhythm van gisbergen was the one that seized the initiative in that moment of weakness for both rick and for will but they're starting to regain their pace again particularly davison that's exactly right he was the fastest of that pack in the last lap with a 24 1 8 versus van gisbergen and rick kelly a couple of tenths slower so as you said, as the tyres start to come up, the two guys that were speedy before the restart were Will Davison and this man, Lee Holdsworth, in fourth position. Be interesting to see as this next phase of the race unfolds. You'd be a little bit gun-shy around here too, given what we've seen historically and yesterday, when you see those little spots of rain on the screen. It's just a bit unnerving particularly when you go into an area like Turn 2 where there's a bit of overhang with the trees, some shade. You just don't want to have the car at its braking maximum with no outs and, and not be able to modulate the brake pedal to save yourself to still hit an apex. If you sidestep, get the front of the car offline by a metre or two around here, it'll have a, a very negative impact. Turn two. As 
Will takes it wide over to the concrete barrier. Down here at turn three, this is the spot that cost Mark Winterbottom, and Jason Bargwana and Michael Caruso dearly. More so for Winterbottom, who's completely out of the race, will leave this race with no points, and second in the championship coming into it. So lap 31 out of 59. So we can now start talking about the next set of pit stops, which will be absolutely critical. Now starting to see an enormous build-up of rubber on the edges of the road. So they've got to be a bit careful of that offline as well. Sunshine as well. Brett? Well, Mark Winterbottom in the garage here. Frosty, not the place you want to be. That was uh, very disappointing. Yeah, um, you know, not my fault. You're caught in someone else's incident and... Uh, Went back to first gear, tried to avoid it, and then got whammoed in the back, and Wink up jumped on the brakes, and it was um, the meat and the sandwich. So, disappointing. Um, qualified badly. It all sort of leads on from that, really, but it's a good thing we get to go home tonight and uh, see the family tomorrow. It's hard. It would have been nice to take away some championship points from today, but that's not going to happen. No, and uh, the car's got a bit of damage too, so um, Perth's not too far away, and the guys have got to do... Uh, quite a, a big week to fix the car so that championship points um, and yeah it, it all adds up so we'll go again we uh, sit here cheer Will on and hope he gets the win. Right, we'll see you in Perth thanks for us. So as we said Mark Winterbottom a bad qualifying performance puts you way down there and as he spectates cheering Will Davison his teammate this year in the trading post FPR Falcon right behind, putting plenty of pressure on is Lee Holdsworth. This is a very healthy battle. They're two young guys who drive these cars very well. And Rick Kelly would be saying, go Lee, because as Lee puts pressure on to Will Davison, he's been able to just sneak away a little bit. And Van Gisbergen is pulling away even more. It's now 2.6 seconds, yeah. the gap. Very impressive. And all that pays dividends when they next have to come into pit lane. Which once they get to lap 35, as Mark Larkham explained earlier in the telecast, they're fueled to the finish. So they're on lap 33 now, beginning 33. Here comes Lee down the inside at one. Oh, got initially didn't look like he was going to get it done, but only in the end did Will just sidestep him. So that's a positional move to third for Lee Holdsworth. He's got pace. I reckon he's going to be on the back of Rick Kelly pretty quick here as well. Tand is going to buy in here with his old teammate. Will moved offline a little bit to give Lee room. There was going to be contact if Will turned in at his normal point. Just here on the previous lap, I noticed that Davison's car was very oversteery on the exit. So I think he might have just lost the balance slightly. We'll stay with him now for this full lap to see what's going on in and around the trading post car. So just look for the bumps. This is now into turn five. This is very fast. Accelerating down to six, and there's a bad bump just in the braking area here. Just there, under the bridge. This is a resurface section, very high grip level through this piece. And this is the trickiest corner on the track, turn seven. Old surface. And big camber change. You can see the cars there run out to the fence. And it looks like Will well, Davison in. in. He was aggressive in the braking area, then did a really good job to get it stopped. Maybe just leave it, mate. Maybe just leave it. They'll be discussing uh, the rear roll centre on the car. Yeah, confirm that. We're leaving the roll centre change. We're going to do four tyres and uh, fuel and then send you, mate. So, uh, slightly out of balance behaviour will be because the tyre set's pretty well worn. This is Carl Reindler. All good. Back to Will. So he did 22 laps on that set of tyres. So that's the reason that they start to go away. Another set of soft compound tyres going on. Go, 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 go. Fuel to the end. 15 seconds stop. Clear track. Should come out on clear track. Uh, actually, there's a car coming down the straight now. Here's our race leader. Almost three seconds. As good as three seconds ahead now. Oh, Rick Kelly, the SP Tools Racing, well, Ford of Shane Van Gisbergen, out of the Stone Brothers Racing, 
stable. And of course, Ross and Jimmy Stone, New Zealand motorsport legends, if you like, but they have yet to win a race on home soil. And even though he's leading this race by three seconds and now coming into pit lane, he does it in typical gear style, getting it loose at turn eight. And Lee Holtzworth confirming that with Richard Holway, he doesn't want to roll centre change on 33. So they're all now in. But remember that we'll stop the lap earlier. So we'll watch all this play out at the back end of this fuel range that they now have to the end. And Rick Kelly has stayed out there. This has to be mistake free. They've got time. Oh, uh oh. oh huh? gee, that was close to not coming off. They've got time. They've got time. The fuel's still going in. Clear out the leads. In and out. Do you get nervous when you oh. see just the slightest little delay, the slightest little error? That was error free, but eventually the wheel nut came off. Good stop from Gary Rogers, guys, because Garth Tander's team were, that was right behind and Gary Rogers' team for Lee Holdsworth has made ground in pit lane versus Toll HRT. So Shane comes out ahead of Lee Holdsworth and Will Davison. So Lee Holdsworth is going to effectively come to second in this race because he is behind Shane Van Gisbergen. And Lee's in this lap, remember? We heard him talking about the roll centre. And it's a net gain for Van Gisbergen of about a second. So Rick Kelly comes in. This will also confirm, if you like, what Van Gisbergen's real lead is. Kelly tippy toes on the way through for the Jack Daniels Four. Bay. It's been a terrific Holding. weekend. Holding. Holding. Victory yesterday, pole today. Holding. Green tyres, so they were Green. brand Green. new. Green on front and fuel. The pit lane will be clear. Flight throttle, flight throttle. Holding, holding, go, go, go. Good job, mate. Good stop. Well yeah, done. So we need to see where he is relative to Shane Van Gisbergen when he clears the lane. Well, Look for Ben. There he is, up the, in the top of screen, coming down the main straight. So Van Gisbergen will be in the lead. The question is, did Rick Kelly gain any advantage by staying out there another lap? Did he manage to chop down the lead any? And will he slot in ahead or behind Will Davis? And he'll come out ahead of him. So Kelly slots into second now behind... Shane Van Gisbergen. There's Will. And Holdsworth must have made a mistake because he was behind, he was the next car. Yep. Yeah. So he's lost a spot to Will Davison. So on track right now, race cleansed, sprint to the finish. Shane Van Gisbergen from Rick Kelly, Will Davison, Lee Holdsworth at Garth Tander. That's your top five. Now remember that I said it was about a net gain of one second, which would have taken the lead out for Shane Van Gisbergen out to about three or four seconds. It's now a little bit tighter than that because that was a good performance by Rick Kelly's crew and by Rick Kelly on his in-lap. Yeah, so, fast one. So what you said is exactly right, Matt. The, the gap now between Van Gisbergen is almost three seconds. It was, it was yeah, 2.7. So did a really good job, both teams actually, to get those stops done. It's and gonna, It's going to be a fight to the finish. It is, certainly will be. And the difference was, I think Van Gisbergen, we'll get this checked for you, but Van Gisbergen put rotor tyres on and Rick Kelly put green tyres on. And this is important to... As the enforcer does his stop, is that Will Davison's posting... Will Davison has just posted the fastest lap of the race. A 123.65 now for Will Davison. And the battle that... Uh, Rick Kelly may have with Shane Van Gisberg and he's one lap better off in terms of fuel. Yes. 23-6 that last lap for Will Davis and set the fastest lap of the race in the trading post entry. So you got Van Gisbergen ahead of Rick Kelly. He's ahead of Will Davison, Lee Holdsworth and Gartander behind them. Steve Owen is doing a good solid control job to stay inside the top five. We've still got Michael Caruso in the pit, Dean Fiore at the exit of turn two. That'll have other cars involved in that somewhere because it's hard to do that by yourself at that spot. Don't think that young Shane's not trying hard either. He's just done the fastest first sector, so he's really into it as Fabian Coulthard ranges up alongside Dean. 
and to that complex. To answer the question you raised a moment ago, we understand that they were fresh tyres, green tyres that went on to uh, Van Gisbergen's car. Paul Forge told uh, Van Gisbergen to go 22 laps to go, stay focused, think deeply about it. Here we go. Fiori, yep. Alex Davis in there, Stevie Johnson, Carl Weinler. There's the other car. Oh, I thought he was going. Look at that one. <laughs> David Reynolds arrives. <laughs> Who put that there? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so the visibility now is difficult going into the sun here at turn three. You can see that there. is perfect for Shane Van Gisbergen. He's at the front, he's got a good lead over Rick Kelly, and he's continually putting down fast times. Let's check out the other highlights from this race start. Rick Kelly started on pole position. Todd Kelly had to play cover for him against Steve Owen, and Van Gisbergen pops up into third from the start. Greg Murphy got a good start as well, and James Courtney, whack, through the turn four chicane. That ruined his day. Here's Craig Lowndes and Jamie Wincup stacked into pit lane. That was so costly for Wincup. And in the end, it would be costly too for Craig Lowndes, who clipped the wall on the way out and therefore had to serve a penalty for going across that blend line. So that was disaster for Team Vodafone. A little clip from Will Davison on uh, Todd Kelly. Somehow they all managed to hold it together, but it was advantage Todd there. And down here at turn three, watch this. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Wing Cup in there, Winterbottom's day is done. Michael Caruso hurt, and Jason Barguana had to drive the rest of that lap back with the lid in his face. That's the moment that Shane Van Gisbergen took the race lead, and the crowd went nuts. More spinning action for Dean Fiore down at turn two. And that brings us to this stage of the race. 20 laps to go. Michael Caruso still needs to come into pit lane. Fastest lap of the race now set by Lee Holdsworth, 123.6. So he's got terrific speed at the moment. But also impressive is Shane Van Gisbergen. On his last lap, he did a 23.9. And those that we've been talking up around him, like Rick Kelly and Will Davison, are in the low 24. So good pace here from Van Gisbergen. He's not showing any sign at all of having to conserve either fuel or tyres or, or hold back anything. He's completely committed to it. There you go, and that's the lead. That track gap that you just saw there to Rick Kelly with Will Davis and Lee Holdsworth. Just in the background of that shot is Garth Tander. Makes up your top five. Steve Owen, Todd Kelly, Tony Dalberto and Jason Bright make up the next five cars to complete the top ten. So on board now with Lee. We get a good look at what his car is like versus Will Davison. We say a lot, the way they achieve their speed is quite different. And... Gary Rogers' cars, I, I'm really impressed with the way these guys go about it. They punch way above their weight in terms of their team. They're a small team and they do a really good job. On board now with Lee, down to turn one. Yes, yeah, Scafie, you are on the money there. And Gary Rogers, yeah, you talked about radars and all the sort of technical stuff we're trying to look at weather. Well, Gary's out, that's him on the pit wall, you can see there in the phone, on the phone. Yeah. One of his mates over there here, as we know, uh, Gary Breach Trotters. Now, horses apparently point their ass to the wind, to the west, <laughs> when it's going to rain. So he's got a mate over the back here with a couple of paddocks, keeping his eye on the horses. Now, he was rock solid on the money yesterday, two minutes away from a shower. So, mate, here's, there's the top hot ticket for the weather <laughs> forecast right there, look. Well, I was talking about going outside the garage and having a look, but he's obviously dealing with a guy a couple of k's away. So, a little bit of Gary Rogers technology in weather prediction. As we see the pressure applied to Will Davison there with young Lee Holdsworth. Doing a really good job. Neil made reference before, he just did the fastest lap of the race at 23.6 a couple of laps ago. 
and of the top five cars is the fastest. But remember, track position is all important in these last laps around the streets of Hamilton with Shane Van Gisbergen with a really good lead of about three and a half seconds over Rick Kelly. So Michael Caruso is your leader, but he must stop, which will put Van Gisbergen into the lead. As we see Lee Holdsworth again right up behind Will Davison. He'll have to have a dive at some point. Probably turn two will be better. Not quite close enough this time. And as I said, they achieve their speeds differently. The guys in FPR have been able to get the cars around the middle of the corner. They maintain the momentum. And the way that the Gary Rogers cars come off the corner, their exit drive traction is one of the best in the field. They ride the bumps well too. They do a good job with their shock absorber technology. And that mid-corner speed there, you can see the FPR Falcon get around the middle of the roundabout probably three or four K faster than Lee, which gave him the run down this long straight to this complex of chicanes, and then down into this fast turn five. Really good corner, this one. You can see this bad bump just under this bridge. It'll make the car ride the bump nicely so it settles for the braking area. And as I said before, this new surface area from six through to seven is quite high grip. So one of the real challenges of street tracks is trying to deal with the difference in surface from corner to corner across these bumps and canvas. Caruso will be in, by the way, in the next two or three laps on our estimates. And uh, that'll take him out of the lead of the race and put Van Gisbergen back in control of the race. As we look rearward still from Rick Kelly, look at this, lead down the inside at one. Will might be in trouble here. And he covers for him a little bit. He was in the middle of the road and in the braking area and he's locked the right hand front wheel. You can see then Lee might, he might get this done. This will be a healthy move if he gets it done. He's done it, well done. Put pressure on, made a little mistake. Will Davison locked the right front, ran a little wide and got a good run out in the Fujitsu Commodore and made that move stick, so well done. So now we'll see what his pace is like versus Rick Kelly. On the subject of pace, Wind Cup's done a 122.8. That's very quick. The race lap record makes his own record. He's down in 22nd. Oh dear, Caruso, Caruso, who was due to come in, has whacked the wall. Now this will be a safety car because there's no way he's going to be able to move that car. In the wall at seven. Are you back or is it stuck? So he would have clipped the wall it, probably at the kick be right. before that, which Neil calls 6.5, don't you, Neil? <laughs> yeah, in a corner that isn't a corner. I think you're right, Croppo, he's not going to go anywhere. He's, uh, he's going to have, he's gonna have a crack. He might yeah, be able to drag it along, but uh, he's, he's made oh, that's right very in. significant heavy contact, and that's going to be a bit of work to rectify that in time for the next event in Perth in a couple of weeks. They've got to be loaded and out of here tonight. No, he is dragging it along. Dragging being the operative word, yeah. Two weeks' time, the Trading Post Challenge mate, in I Perth. On screen, just be careful going around left-handers, mate. Um...
car eight, perhaps put the ship flag to car eight. Um, Gisbergen leads the way. Rick Kelly right behind him. Lee Holdsworth tucked in in third. The third restart of this race. And one thing we know from the gears, he will not leave us wondering down to turn one. That's a good restart by the 21-year-old. And I'm pretty sure that Garth Tander has snuck up alongside, if not in front, Will Davison. He has. So Tander goes into fourth. Down to turn two. Holdsworth has a look at Kelly for third. Just as the safety car was deployed, Will was reporting a lot of oversteer. That's the back of the car sliding too much in the trading post entry. So he's lost a spot now to his former teammate. Rick Kelly is definitely one under pressure here from Lee Holtworth. Already in the space of these four turns that we've made it to, Lee's had two good looks around car 15. Run you through it. Van Gisbergen, and Rick Kelly, Holdsworth, then Garth Tander fourth. Davison is fifth. Steve Owen sixth. Then Todd Kelly seventh. Behind them, Jason Bright pushing up into eighth. This is Will from the restart. Down to turn one. And Tander will get him. So he just went wide enough yep. for Tander to shoot up on the inside. There he goes. He had a big understeer at turn one. Actually couldn't get the car around. Allowed Garth to get underneath him. Holdsworth looks menacing here. Keep an eye on car 33. He's really applying pressure now to Kelly. So the restarts, I've been critical of, Todd, of Rick Kelly's restarts because look. Oh, here we go. Here's Lee down the inside, and this is a last minute dive. Very good pass. And Rick Kelly was pretty mature then too because he gave him some room. But that is a very good pass. And the only guy in this field that's got Shane Van Gisberg at speed is Lee Holdsworth right now. And up until this stage, Van Gisbergen hasn't had to battle Lee Holdsworth directly. He's always had somebody in between him and car 33. Scafi, I reckon there was a real message in that overtaking manoeuvre there. You said it, how late that was of Holdsworth. It doesn't happen any later than that. And that mentality says to me, he's after Gizzy, he's prepared to take the risk, because that was a risky one. That's Tony Delberto right. in trouble at uh, turn two. The safety car is going to be deployed. There's another car involved in this, I think. I've got a feeling it may have been... May have been Todd Kelly. I, I half intercepted a message on the radio. Well, Todd's gone right down as well. Todd's gone down to the 19th, so I reckon you're right. So this, this restart, I was worried that Steve Owen and Todd Kelly were having a bumping duel up near the uh, pit entry area, which the wall sort of protrudes out. Yes, There's sir. some drama there. That was Jason Bright and Dalberto. So this is the dive that Holdsworth had. That was very late, but he got it done. Well done. And then in the same place, there you go. There's Todd Kelly involved in it. Well done, Cropper. So I don't really know how it happened because we only caught the last part of the two cars making contact. Take the window in, take the drive, pull it out, Tony. Stand under the right. 
run on the fence and have a look at it. Stone Brothers Racing, knowing that there are nervous times ahead because they're going to ride every single bump with this kid and he's going to throw it around. That's assured. Lee Holdsworth has been super quick for effectively the second half of this race. He's in second and he will try and climb over the back of car nine as soon as possible. I love your glass half full optimism, but you opened the batting then, Matty, with assuming there's no more trouble. Now, uh, you know, historically, there's been a bit of it around here. And just looking, at, I think it's to the southwest at the moment. It's as black as the ace of spades. And uh, that's going to be the twist in the story to the chequered flag. But uh, this is a mega moment now for Shane Van Gisbergen. The most important 10 laps of his life. This will be the critical time. He has to get off to a good restart, and he's done so. But look at Lee Holdsworth. And Rick Kelly. Tander is fourth, and Davison is fifth. Bad restart, Garth Tander then. Four or five car lengths behind Rick Kelly, so I don't know what happened. Down to turn two. Will Davison's playing defence against Steve Owen, who's been so solid inside the top ten. Car balance has gone off a little for Will. He's also complaining that, though it's not as bad as yesterday, his right leg and foot still giving him trouble. Fifteen spots made up by Garth Tander since the start. They played the early pit stop card and it paid dividends. He's done the rest of the job through turn four. They all go through it cleanly. They've lit up the scoreboard like a Christmas tree with those sensors being alerted for curb hopping, but Van gisberger has got plenty in the bank. In fact, all of the, the top guys do. Now, here comes Holdsworth. I just heard Paul Dumbrell say on the radio to Dave Patterson, there's a bit of rain around the back of the track, so right on cue. There's the spots of moisture on the screen. I've got to tell you, Shane Van Gisbergen is using every inch of road here. He's just Whoa. about hit every wall for the last six turns. Now on the turn eight and release onto the front straight. That was Jason Bright. There was Carl Reinler. And this is a sprint race. Fuel is no longer a talking point. It's just a pure, straightforward battle to the flag, the stuff that we love. Two young charges at the front. Van Gisbergen searching for his first win. Wouldn't it be something if he could do it at home? Lee Holdsworth, he's won twice before, and we know that he's good on the streets because he finished 2010 with a victory at Sydney. Rick Kelly tucked in behind them, having a stellar weekend for Kelly Racing. Victory yesterday, pole today. He's sitting on the podium right now. There may be some rain still to come. On lap 52 out of 59. Shane Van Gisbergen came to our attention because he's fast. And the best way to put it is he's crazy. He's not going to give that up. If he's going to win this race, that's how he'll do it. And he doesn't mind the rain. You've got to love this. Nothing in it at the front. They've pegged away a little bit from Rick Kelly, so it's a race in two. The other thing that's interesting here is that a lot more car language from Car Nye. It's very flamboyant looking lap from Shane. For Lee, it all looks a lot straighter, so he's achieving the lap speed without the fluff. And that may pay dividends in the back end of the race in terms of rear tyre behaviour. This will be the most amount of pressure that this young bloke has ever been under. Home street race in the lead in front of the best drivers in this part of the world when Lee Holdsworth, Rick Kelly and Garth Tander breathing down your neck. Gary Rogers, bottom left. Stone Brothers Racing, top left. Showers reported at turn three. They're well, up coming around, up to that right now. And up around the back, Crompo, there's already uh, raindrops on the windscreen. So out of turn two, and this is the spot that Neil's talking about. Turn three, it's a roundabout normally. They go around it, the wipers are on. Wiper. Yep. And you do that just to get a little gauge as to how wet it actually is. There is nothing more difficult to do than to assess big oh. wheel lock there. That's damage to the front through the chicane. 
He's hit the tyres. And it's plucked a bit of the splitter off, and it's gone under the front tyre. He's got to be careful it doesn't fully lock and spear him off. Tand is going to be able to pass as a result, and he goes down the inside now for third. So Gar Tander gets on the podium right now, but Rick Kelly, even with a damaged Jack Daniels car, doesn't want to give it up. Will he, Davison gets a sniff of the trouble ahead and wants to join it. Got to be so careful it doesn't puncture though, Matt Ingram will fire him into the fence. This is the spare car that Rick's in. And here it is, here's the damage. So off the first curve, bang, got the tyres and pulled the right hand front piece out of the front air dam as Will Davison goes by also. So Rick Kelly in a huge amount of trouble with only five laps left. This is Ford versus Holden. Shane Van Gisbergen driving for Ford. Lee Holdsworth right behind him. And last time around, Scafe, Van Gisbergen pulled away just a little bit. He got another two tenths of a second advantage. That's how the championship stands at the moment. Rick Kelly sliding further down, drifting further away from Jamie Wincup. Jamie's been let out of jail a little bit today, hasn't he, the way things have played out? There it is again. Wow. Just astonishes me when I see the impact that goes through the car. So damage on the front of Rick's car. Now, see how close yeah. Van Gisbergen was to the fence there. And there's the rain. He, he plays 10 tenths all the time, doesn't he? So it's getting wetter. Lee's closer. He's got two V8 supercar race wins to his name. Van Gisbergen, zero. He's playing for keeps here. This matters. It could be the fifth different race winner in six races in this year's championship. I was watching Shane Van, uh, Van Gisbergen really carefully at the start of this race as we check yeah, out watch this. this at turn five. Look, Look how close this is. Oh. Oh. Millimetres from disaster. From here, so he can't stop the wheel spin. He can't stop the wheel spin. He gets on the paint, and because of a little bit of water, that becomes like ice. Now, what Holdsworth's doing is giving... You can see the rain down into turn two. He's giving... Gisbergen a little bit of a margin here because what you want to do is if the lead guy makes a mistake, then you don't go with him. Yeah, so this is going to be a smart thing to do. If there's going to be a puddle or if there's going to be something slippery, Van Gisbergen's going to be the first one to get it. And uh, at the moment, Shane's the pioneer. Not a great spot to be. It's great to have track position, but it's not always great to be the first guy on the spot if it happens to be wet. Shane was enormously focused at the start of this race when the national anthem was being sung. He was in the car. He was virtually nodding off. He, he was that much in the zone. And I saw him take a couple of really deep breaths because he knew that he had a chance today by starting on the third row of the grid, correction, the second row of the grid, he was always going to be in with a chance. With possible rain, that puts him in with more of a chance. But do not count out Lee Holdsworth. The Fujitsu racer will give it everything he's got. He's just managed to open up a little bit more of a gap, in fact, in the last half a lap. It's officially 0.77. So Rick Kelly would be very disappointed with himself to make that mistake and hit those tyres so hard at Turn 4. It's taken him off the podium and what would have been a, a fantastic weekend for Kelly Racing. The rain continues to sprinkle into Turn 2. You can see the guys, again, just using the wipers where they need to get a, a little read on what the track condition's like. And damage, a lot of damage, a huge amount of damage oh to Fabian Kulkov's car. That'll be a safety car. The implications oh, here Tim are interesting. Slade, I'm pretty sure Tim Slade has collected Fabian Coulthard. So that's Tim Slade wow. at the exit of pit lane on lap 56 of 59. Remember Van Gisbergen almost had a half, uh, had a, a full second advantage at that stage over Lee Holdsworth. And let's that's hope that Fabian's okay because this is going to be as big as you will see. This is what's happened. Just have a. So he got in the fence and oh. bang! A lot of damage for a, effectively a slow corner. Here we go. So he runs out of road. Two teammates there bumping into the fence and comes out and grabs the left hand side of the Bundy Commodore. So it looks worse than what it was. So all drivers currently being warned. And. Uh, Awkward juggle for the race director, Tim Schenken, here as to what to do. Now, because Tim's car's off to the side, there is debris on the racetrack. 
Tim's default setting in these situations is to prefer to try and let the race run. And that's Fabian walking back to the little exit area on the side of the racetrack. So that the, the aim here is for the race not to finish under yellow, if possible, provided it's safe. Well, unless somebody collects it, moves it, a race director, like you said, like all of us, wants to see this race go the distance and they're prepared to take that risk right now. Well, fortunately, Matt, the, the car is parked on the inside of the road coming out of Turn 1, and then the next car is parked on the non-active side of the road down to Turn 2. So you could get away with this for a couple of laps as long as everyone is notified. The debris the problem on the other side of the circuit. But yep. let's, let's just enjoy this battle to the end while it's raging because Lee Holdsworth won't let Shane Van Gisbergen go and Shane Van Gisbergen has everybody on the edge of their seats. They roared approval when he took over the race lead. They've gone through every bump and every heart-stopping moment. Oh, Lee skated in third gear all the way up to the wall on the exit of turn eight. It was a beautiful bit of delicate sliding. He's pushing as hard as he dare, but at the moment, Shane's still got the margin at 0.76. And that's a good margin. It's just enough to have a little bit of distance in between you and the car behind you. Garth Tander's watching it all unfold ahead. There's the mangled car. And double Fabian yellows. Goulthard. So with double yellows there, or any yellows down there, you cannot pass. They've got to wait until they're cleared in the next sector. And see the locals. The locals are already clapping. <laughs> they're lighting up. Look, look at this. Up. Look at this. This, this is fantastic. This is awesome. At turn three, they've been doing it ever since the gears took over. And they will certainly be in full voice. Ross and Jimmy Stone have waited a long time for something like this to happen. They've had incredible highs in this sport. Their last race win was back in 2008 when James Courtney won at Queensland Raceway. But they've never had success on home soil. These are some of the proudest Kiwis you can get. This country's been through an enormous amount in recent times and this would mean a hell of a lot to everyone. And uh, both Shane and Lee triggering the electronic loops through the turn four chicane that time. So they're starting to put even more pressure on each other. They've got a little bit of cushion to be able to do that at the moment. Some other drivers have used up all their lives. But look at this. One lap to go. One lap, exactly. New Zealand's responding. Van Gisbergen's got the lead of the race. He's got seven more corners to negotiate, and he's got a margin of 0.95 of a second. This 21-year-old Kiwi, born in Auckland, came through the ranks and then delivered in style in the Australian V8 Supercar Championship. <laughs> and they love it! They've waited a long time. No Kiwi driver has won here in Hamilton. We've had some awesome racing. We've seen the best of the best master this circuit. And right now, this youngster, who's electrified the sport, has them standing. He's held them off. He's fought the weather. Keep your head down. And make sure you don't make a mistake through this tricky section, last part of this lap. He's suffered all the knocks that this sport can throw at you. And Lee Holtzworth has pushed him all the way in the final stages of this race. He's done it. Shane Van Gisberg, and a moment to remember, he's going to go off. Well done. This is the day the wild child arrived in the V8 supercars. Victory for the Giz at home. And that's one for the Kiwis. And don't they deserve it? Holdsworth second. Congratulations to Fujitsu Racing. Garth Tander gets on the podium in third. Will Davison in fourth. A great effort from Steve Owen. Enjoy this ride, Shane Van Gisbergen. Ross Stone, congratulations, mate. Fantastic. I mean, you put your faith in this young kid and he delivered in spades today. Yeah, he did a um, real, real good job, you know. It's taken a while, but um, I've always told him that the hardest one's going to be the first one. So hopefully there's more to come. <laughs> Very happy for you, mate. Great stuff. He's a man of few words, Ross, but you, will, you watch this. Watch we this. Go. <laughs> favorite.
for its son right now. Exactly. He smoked him. It's a great breakthrough for the young bloke and it's a great breakthrough for all of the management, the engineering group and everybody at Stone Brothers Racing. There's the margin in the end. It was three quarters of a second over Lee Holdsworth. Nice fight back this weekend, Garth Tander. It hasn't been a bright, shiny one for him, but he's got a bunch of very important points. But hard to say enough about Stone Brothers Racing and everybody at SP Tools. Well done. Russell Ingle inside the top 10 and so too Stephen Johnson. There's Jason Bright in 11th spot. Warren Luff fought back too. He had his troubles. Jamie Winkup, our series leader, finishes in 18th. But importantly, he finishes. Tim Slade there had troubles at the end, and it's a long list. Mark Winterbottom will certainly rue this weekend. So that's how they finish race six at the ITM 400 in Hamilton. Shane Van Gisbergen, our winner. For our South Australian viewers, thanks for your company. Enjoy Seven News. And James Courtney does not finish. So what a whack in terms of championship points, but <laughs> what a fairy tale, isn't it? <laughs> He's still going to go. Yeah. <laughs> this is the changing face of the sport, folks. We've waited a while, 111 races, in fact, for Shane Van Gisbergen to get his first win on the board. And importantly, he really had to fight for it. There were some times there where it was stand up and deliver time, yep. and he did so. So he'll walk away from this one not only with a massive smile on his face, but he'll look back and go, you know what? I fought them at the top of their game there and I beat them. And there's no reason why I can't do it again. And look at that for a surprise. He's going to slide his way into the pit lane. Good Jeez. job this guy too, Matt. Really good drive, Lee Holdsworth. <laughs> Steve Owen converted a good qualifying performance to good solid points as well in that fifth, so that's noteworthy. You know what he did? He stayed out of trouble. Yep. Yeah, he did. Good. Steve stayed out of trouble, trouble all around him, and he finishes in the top five. Did you see Fabian Coulthard standing out on the road, clapping his fellow New Zealander? That's really good camaraderie. Well, this weekend's delivered a lot of emotion. Yesterday it was the Kelly Racing Clan's first win, first team win, and today it's Shane Van Gisbergen's first ever race win at home. Fantastic. Just listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the protocol is, it's not going to happen for a while. <laughs> He's going to do it his way, the Giz way. This will be a lifelong memory to win your first event on home soil. Shane Van Gisbergen, congratulations. First win on home soil at this event. That is incredible. How's that feel for you? Oh, can you believe it? Yeah! <laughs> Man, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank my fans, my family, and, you know, the great people who come here and support us, holding off forward. It's unbelievable. I, I could see us all cheering, and I was trying to get excited but, excited, but trying to concentrate, and, yeah, we did it. You sure did it. And just at the right time, too, New Zealand really needed this. You are a hero for this country. Shane, don't go away from us. I know you've got a lot of, a lot of people you want to hug, but congratulations, mate. And Ross Stone in there as well. Jimmy Stone. Shane, how hard were those last few laps? Oh, man, it was pretty tough. I had Holdsworth there, and it was kind of deja vu. He was like that at uh, Homebush, but I knew we had plenty of fuel this time. We had pace, so unbelievable. I'm so stoked. Did, did you feel the pressure of the nation? I know you said you saw them in the stands. The moment you got in front, they were on their feet and cheering. Yeah, I've seen that. And when you have a whole nation behind you, it's hard to not get excited. So I was pushing pretty hard there, but um, unbelievable feeling. And I think I owe the boys some beers tonight. You're just what the nation needed. Congratulations, Shane. Well Thank done. Thank you. Great celebration. Of course, he was pushed all the way by Lee Holdsworth. It was an incredible effort. Congratulations to Lee Holdsworth as well. There are just Stone Brothers Racing Team members everywhere down here, as you'd imagine. Jimmy and Ross Stone, very emotional about what's just gone on, as you would expect. Lee Holdsworth is here. Lee, congratulations. That was great racing down to the line. You just couldn't get there. Oh, he drove too well. What can I say? He's, uh, he drove a really good race, Shane, and um, congratulations to him and his team. But 
Um, our car, you know, the GRM Fujitsu car was brilliant all race, and you know, to come from sixth to uh, to second after the day like yesterday, qualifying 27th and then finishing 22nd, it's a great uh, great improvement on yesterday, and um, yeah, really pleased, really pleased. And, and Lee, positive signs as we head to the rest of the season, of course, Perth ahead of us in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, I mean. Um, you know, our cars are really good in the dry. We've got to work on the wet weather uh, set up at the moment. But, you know, on these soft tyres, I think we go pretty well over in Perth. So looking forward to it. Well, it was fantastic to watch those last few laps. Lee, congratulations. Well done. Thanks very much. Cheers. And Garth Tander for the Holden Racing Team up into third spot. GT, well done. That was hard work today. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Um, not ideal starting 19th around here when the rain came in quietly and that got us behind the eight ball. But uh, guys did a great job with strategy. We, uh, we pitted early and that made a big get difference. We got went up to the sixth and then uh, we could charge through on a few of them. So after yesterday, we we're really, really happy with that. And um, you want to say uh, thanks very much to Burnsy, my mechanic. He uh, spent the night in the hospital last night after I ran him over. So uh, thanks, brother. <laughs> and now we go to Perth, which is one of your happy hunting grounds too. Yeah, look, great, great to have a bit of momentum going home now. So uh, going away on holidays for a couple of days over Easter and looking forward to cleaning them up in Perth. Well done, Garth. Congratulations. Let's go to Mark Larkham. Rick Kelly, busted splitter, lost some downfall, so that was unfortunate, mate. But, gee, you must be able to drag a lot from this weekend. It was really good for your team. Yeah, we wanted to really drag another podium from today, but we can't ask for too much for our first, um, you know, victory this weekend. I didn't have the pace to run with the guys up the front. They had some really great moves and passed me, mostly the one where we were weak. But it's quite fitting, Shane, won this weekend being in New Zealand. He drove fantastically the whole time. He, he got a gap on me, and he could just maintain that and looked after his tyres. So, I mean, we can't ask for everything, like I said. I think the weekend for us was fantastic, and uh, we just need a little bit more pace out of our car in the dry, and we'll be right. I reckon you have some big things, mate. Just watching from on pit lane, the demeanour in your pits over the weekend with your boys whilst you're out in the car, A1. So, well done. Appreciate that. Thank you. It's good.